Well, hello there, boys and girls, and welcome back for another Flash. This is the second lecture in our series talking about sea currents, ocean currents. Keep in mind, it is a video, so while you're watching this at home, make sure you have no other distractions, no YouTube on the side. Just ignore all the suggested whatevers. You can pause, stop, rewind, take notes, all the normal things you do if it were in-class lecture, except better. This one's going to be about the surface current forces. What are the forces that are driving those surface currents? Remember, it's mostly the surface mixing of the water that's driving all the mixing of the water globally. So we're going to talk about how that works with very terrible animations in between. So first we have to look at all the factors involved. Wind is the number one factor. In fact, wind really kicks off the, the whole deal. Wind is kicked off by pressure gradient force, it's altered by Coriolis effect, and friction is also in there too, you know, slowing it down, all that stuff acting against the motion. Gravity plays a huge role. It's all about density of the water, hot water, salty water, warm water, cold water. We talked about that before. For a refresher, click in the this area to watch the previous video if it exists. Friction, right? The water actually has its own friction. It's got its own viscosity. There's objects in the water that can change the path of the water, like uh, those pesky continents. So those play a major role. And as well as the density of the water filtering with gravity, continents, like I just said, and the Coriolis effect twice? Oh no, I don't even know what that is yet. So essentially, because the Earth is not heated the same all over. And you know that the middle of the earth here in the tropics is way, way hotter than the poles of the earth way farther away. And because the earth is not all heated the same and not all heated like each half of the earth, right? Because when it's a day for us, it's night for the other side. When it's night for us, it's day for the other side. You get this, the weather. All the weather on the planet pretty much boils down to that differential heating of the Earth's surface and what that does for atmospheric movement. For more on that, take meteorology. It's an awesome course. Here's the skinny. When the Earth gets hotter, you create these areas of low pressure. The, air, the warm air, it rises, it vacates the area. So you can imagine that if we had some air... And and if it all of a sudden is not there anymore, you have this void here where there wasn't as much air. And then because diffusion is a thing and molecules are always moved from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration, over here where there's still areas with higher concentration, we'll go, hmm, there's some space over here where I could be, where it would not be terrible, and so I'm going to go over there. And the horizontal movement of the molecules of the atmosphere across the Earth's surface, we call that the wind. I mean, that's amazing. The wind is just the diffusion of the atmosphere. You're welcome. Keep in mind that the warm air carries more water vapor with it, which also changes the density, making a humidity a thing. The upper atmosphere cools the air when it's up here and then it sinks back down that whole round trip being a convection current just like in the mantle we have them in the atmosphere as well that is actually called a cell so the differences in pressures are actually called a gradient mrs seen has some really awesome animations that you will not find here because they're probably copyrighted if that wasn't awesome enough there's the whole rotating planet thing to work out. The fact that right now, if I'm not moving, I'm actually moving. It's all about your frame of reference. If I was looking down from outer space at the world, I would actually see me doing... I'm actually moving right now. I have momentum. I have velocity. And because of the laws of motion and momentum, physics kids, you know what I'm talking about things are going to get all weird and deflected because the Earth is round. Now we call that deflection Coriolis deflection, named after the famous meteorologist Coriolis, who discovered it. Now a lot of times it's called Coriolis force, even though it's not really a force, but you can't actually measure the force of the deflection, which is actually always to the right if you're in the northern hemisphere. And then you guessed it, it's always going to be to the left 
if you're in the southern hemisphere. That's the rule of thumb there. For example, if I was playing the baseballs, and I'm up in, say, Toronto, object being deflected to the right, if I'm a little bit behind the pitch and pulling it down, the first, well, sending it down the first base side, that deflection to the right can actually make my home run shot turn foul. Here's a picture basically showing what I mean. All right, think of it like a merry-go-round if you're in the center versus on the edge of the merry-go-round, you're actually traveling at different speeds. Even though you may have the same angular uh, momentum, you're going to have different angular velocities, right? Same thing here. And how that actually works is if you have air that's up in the, or objects even, that are up in the northern hemisphere and they're moving towards the equator, they get deflected to the right. Same thing if you have things that are in the southern hemisphere, like there's Antarctica, and they're moving up towards the equator, they're going to go deflected to the left. And again, that's because of the Earth's rotation. So here's a really good diagram that shows you that. So the Earth is rotating in this direction. And you can see that if you have a plane that is traveling from Stockholm, Sweden, down here to uh, Africa, and it's going to go on a straight line because of the deflection, it's actually going to curve to its right. That's very important. It's not your right, it's its right. It gets deflected to its right, and will actually head over towards South America instead. So maybe flying an airplane is not as easy as we all thought. And as a result of these uh, different cells, we've got areas of high pressure and low pressure, and the Coriolis deflection, you actually get these different zones of wind. And you want to commit this picture to memory is very important. In fact, I would recommend you pause the video here, jot this down in your notes, or find another good picture online that you can copy paste into your digital notes to look at and enjoy. But keep in mind, for the most part, here's our prevailing wind direction moving from the higher pressure to the lower pressure, and it gets bent by Coriolis. So here's, there's one cell, here's another cell you got here, moving from high pressure to low pressure, bent by Coriolis. Here's another high pressure area, We're moving from high pressure towards the lower pressure, same thing down here, but it gets deflected now, it's in the southern hemisphere, deflected to its left, and it gets really extra fun because if something is moving not vertically on the globe, it will still be deflected to the right or the left. And to help me explain this, I have my good friend Willie. Now Willie, like many of you, was a very good student until he started making poor decisions and he started going the wrong way. Here's a picture of wrong way Willie. You can see he's making all kinds of bad choices. He's wearing headbands in school. He didn't get enough sleep last night. And I'm pretty sure that that's tobacco in his mouth. He's a hooligan. That Willie. Poor Willie. He used to have so much golf for him. He was a bright kid. But what's going to happen is Willie is actually going to uh, swim through the ocean as a drop of water. Now because the Earth is rotating that direction and because the Earth is bigger, right there in the middle, objects along the middle of, ooh, there it is, objects along the middle of the Earth are actually traveling faster. You can see on the picture here it's showing you 100 miles an hour, just using the crappy swear words, sorry about that. But objects up here where the Earth is not quite as round, they're moving a little bit slower because the Earth is spinning at the same speed, but the Earth is not as big, so points here don't move as fast as points here. Same thing uh, the farther you are away. And on the bottom of the Earth, it's the same thing because the Earth, while not a perfect sphere, is mostly a circle. Okay, so now that I've cleared the globe out, you can see here's Willie right up in there, and he's going to try and swim down for the equator. But, like the text says over here, before he swims, he's going 15 miles an hour this way already. And as he comes down here, he's still going 15 miles an hour to, well, towards your right of the picture. He's still going 15 miles an hour, but everything else is going 45 miles an hour. So Willie starts to fall behind and curves off to the left here. Poor Willie, always going the wrong way. And now if he were to swim back up to try and get to back where he was, if he goes straight up, I mean this is just Willie swimming straight up, he's not going on a curve, he's swimming straight up. And you see down here, he was moving 100 miles an hour this way. And so as he goes up, 
he's actually going so he's going faster than everything else around him and so he actually starts moving to the right Willie you're going the wrong way Willie and again that's because of Newton's first law you have objects that are in motion it's already got this momentum and the law of conservation of momentum says it has to keep moving with that same momentum just like uh, conservation of velocity it's the same idea he's got that inertia he's moving in a certain direction with a certain velocity and unless he's acting on by an outside force which he's not he's actually going to keep on pulling to the east so even though he swims due north he hits an area where the earth is not moving as fast and he starts to pull away to it because he's got that same momentum from the equator. So there's Willie swimming and you'll notice that in both times if Willie's going this way, he's deflected to his right. Up here when Willie was swimming south heading this way, he's deflected again to his right. So any object in motion in the northern hemisphere always gets deflected to the right. Here's the same idea, but for the left, and again, it's all because this middle part of the world here has a higher momentum than all the other parts of the world. So as you're approaching it, you're going slower and things go past you. As you're going away from it, you're going faster than the other things, and they fly by. Who should out there for you? Now, what's really kind of fun is Willy, you know, being a fictional aqua-based character, actually is showing exactly the same way that the currents move in the ocean, right? So you end up with these major circulations going counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere and going clockwise doo -doo 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 -doo, in the northern hemisphere. And again, that's due to the Coriolis deflection. So let's talk about winds and oceanic circulation. On the Earth, even though it doesn't always feel like it, there's actually very, very steady winds going across the surface. They're called prevailing winds, and they move in a similar way to Willy. They've got the pressure gradient, they've got the Coriolis, that was the picture from before. And so again, water gets deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere or to the left in the southern hemisphere. And as a result, the wind kicks off in these jeering motions in the ocean. So here's a pretty picture that pretty much shows you all that going on. Here is the surface winds around the world. On any given day, these are the average surface winds that is observed by NASA. So you know it's going to be good. And you see, you observe how the wind patterns go. You can see you've got swirly giggles and twirly lads. And if you look in here really closely, you can actually see there's teensy arrows in here actually showing you which way everything is moving. Here's North America, and, or no, sorry, there's Russia, here's North America, there's Alaska, in case you're like lost about where we just were looking. And so as a result, the ocean currents, because the wind does that, the ocean actually gets pushed by the water because of friction being a thing. Here's a pretty picture showing you those same gyres. You got the North Atlantic gyre, you got the South Atlantic gyre, you got the Indian Ocean gyre, you got the South Pacific gyre, you got the North Pacific gyre, and those are the gyres. Here it is if the Earth was tilted the normal way, with up being up, there's us again. You can actually see the gyres, but what I really like about this one is it actually shows you the difference between the warm water and the cooler water. So you can look in this picture and you can actually see how the warmer water is moving because it has a different density than the cooler water like we talked about yesterday. So it's not just about warm air, cool air, wind this, wind that. The water temperature and density also plays a role, but it's kicked off by the wind. And just like we talked about yesterday, uh, these gyres actually have a huge impact on the climates around the region because of which gyre is pushing uh, heat or pulling heat from it or to areas. Some of the fun ones, you've got the Svedrup, which is a very nice, uh, is this big old gyre right up in here. And it actually means all the rivers, and you can actually see here they are flowing around the Nordic areas of the world with the French accent. You can actually see they're moving around and it looks like a bunch of distributary rivers 
all flying around in different directions. And again, you can see over here, they're showing you the winds. These are westerly winds moving this way. You've got these itty bitty trade winds moving that way, not as much. But you can actually see that the direction of the wind is then influencing the way that the currents move. Add that to the fact that you've got a mound of water here, and then you've got differences in salinity and temperature up here, and the fact that you've got continents and plate tectonics and craziness happening, I mean, the currents get kind of silly up here. It's amazing that any of the Nordic peoples ever made it down here to the Americas to discover it before Christopher Columbus ever did. So some of the things we're going to talk about, talk about the Gulf Stream, which is what uh, Ben Franklin actually was credited with discovering, but I'm sure they knew about it before, which is how uh, the ships would be able to move across the ocean, like getting on a little highway. Again, that's all due to that same uh, warm versus cool kicking in with the wind. Here's a good example of it. Here's the Gulf Stream doing Gulf Stream things. You see the cooler water versus the warmer water and just poof, moves over there, which is also responsible for the Mediterranean climate across the ocean. So I'll end on this picture of the gyres. If you guys have any questions, don't forget to put them in the moodly form, doodly dorum. Thanks for watching the flip class video, everyone. Nice work.